we have two people who asked us about previewing the Argentina versus Italy game. The winner of the Euros facing off against the winner of Copa America at the Wembley Stadium. A big game in the sense that you have previewed it as a a uh, measuring stick for yeah. where this Argentine squad is. Yes. Let's talk a little bit more about that. How you? Uh, what are you thinking heading into this match about these these two teams now? So initially, a couple weeks ago, um, I was a little bummed when Italy lost because I was like, "Damn it!" Like, I wanted Italy to go into this game high on confidence, beating Portugal, going to a World Cup, and I wanted them to take that energy with them to this game so they could play a team with that same sentiment within themselves in Argentina. Argentina. I basically have that feeling of oh we're you know we're confident we can beat anybody. They showed that in the, obviously in the in the South American qualifiers that they're pretty much unbeatable. So I wanted those two teams to clash uh, with each other with that same feeling of confidence. So I was a little bummed that Italy lost in the way that they did because ultimately I thought I was like well then Italy's just not going to show up mentally to this game. That's what I thought. The more I think about it, though, the fact that it's at Wembley, the fact that there's a trophy on the Dude, line, a title, man. penalties will decide this if mm -hmm. it ends in a draw. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't worry. I was Maybe I don't press that panic button just yet because I think the Italians will show up. I, I, I went through this whole... Uh, I went through this whole like emotional battle with myself to decide like how do I feel about going into this game. So ultimately, I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be Dude, hotly games contested, Wembley, man. Yes. Wembley's exactly, games are bro. some of the best men in world the football. The Italians and the Argentinians are going to show up and put a hell of an atmosphere, man. I cannot wait for this game. Um, ultimately, I just want to see how well Argentina play. That's it. I'm going to be looking at their style, how many times they break the line, how much uh, how much possession they keep, because I'm solely seeing this, as I said before, as a measuring game for how yeah. good Argentina is. I do not care how how Italy play. No, yeah. As long as they show up in, uh, with a competitive spirit, I'm solely going to be looking at how Argentina boss the game, uh, how many shots they get on target, and how creative they are, because that's ultimately going to tell me how good Argentina can be against the top side. This gets interesting because did you see that recent announcement of Jorginho Chiellini announcing this as his last international match? He's retiring after this game. Dang. Just a little bit more to add in the emotional aspect yeah. of the, the buildup to this match. The mental aspect of this is also something that we got to talk about. Mentally, what it would do for an Argentine squad to win this match and what would essentially be like an away game, yeah. win it, and continue you know, preparing for the World Cup, knowing that you just defeated a good team and preparing yourself for, for what could be one of your better World Cup runs. There was a, they called it a memorandum of understanding between UEFA and Commonwealth because <laughs> they want to try to link up, they want to better that relationship, <laughs> which is interesting because it's, it's almost like political. You Dude, know? It's like, absolutely. It's like the two presidents like shaking each other's hands <laughs> in front of them, like, taking a picture. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. But I, I, I read like in December when they're holding like a Nations League conference, one of like the UEFA executives he said that there's a possibility as a part of this like memorandum to include South American teams in the UEFA Nations League. Dude. Not obviously this year, yeah, but yeah. for the but next no. iteration, so a two years time, they're thinking of including all 10 South oh American teams. Oh my God, man. Which would be Whoa. insane. What does that mean? What does though? that mean man, though? Because, like, yeah. do, do these European teams come down to La Bombonera, bro? Yeah, I don't know. Man. <laughs> that, that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, but not not yeah, only man. that, I was thinking about the implications because it kind of makes sense. If you're in charge of South America, right? How do you improve the region? You play the best talent. Absolutely. And if you don't want that gap to get too big, because a big theme of my World Cup analysis has been that UEFA's gap is getting bigger compared to South America's, right? UEFA is running away with it and South America is trying to keep, keep up, right? For yeah, the most part, yeah. as a whole, as a whole. So how do you close that gap? Well, something Dude, like no, this, yeah, man. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. If, if Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay are playing against European sides in a Nations League format where it's like competitive, but not like down on the line right. competitive, then this could really honestly improve both Dude, sides. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah, but then I was thinking about what this does to 
us are the, are coming those neighbors, man. Shit. CONCACAF's going to be left behind, bro, because remember in 2016 when we had the Copa America Centenario, the whole idea was maybe this leads to something bigger, mm -hmm. right? Maybe this leads to a connection between CONCACAF and Comebol, the two American continents, uh, making an agreement, making some sort of connection relationship yeah. with each other. But now it seems like Comebol just like, hey, we don't need you. We don't need y'all. We're, we're going to go to Europe. Yeah. Dude, that gap will get even bigger. This includes African teams, AFC teams. Oh, yeah. Like the no, gap yeah. is going to get worse for all of us. And worse. those two are just going to dominate. Dude, are going to dominate on an even bigger level. On an even bigger uh, level. In the South American sense, yes. Like a lot of the reasons that South America hasn't won the World Cup in recent memory is because they just don't face that competition regularly. They're right. not ready. But like how Brazil wasn't ready to face Belgium. Dude, they were not like ready. Argentina wasn't ready to face France. This could be avoided hypothetically if they were to, to create this exactly this friendship so it's it's a little shady man like yeah. you know they're shaking hands but but it, <laughs> mentally south america's thinking i'm gonna catch up to you yeah. fucker. <laughs> and european europe's like i'm gonna make a shitload of money off yeah it. exactly so it gets exactly. interesting <laughs>